What's up, guys? We're back at Knipex. There's Pete. We're back in the, the demo room, but we got some questions that's asked a lot, right? People asking about the handle differences, asking about Swedish pipe wrenches, and there's also a bad myth going around about Knipex, and we're going to put that to bed today. So check it out. There's Maggie if you're not subscribed to her new Instagram channel. Follow us, Knipex North America. Woo! Go get some of that. All right, let's see what he's got. Come on. Okay, so we're back with Pete and one of the things we're going to cover first is I had a lot of people talking about some, we're going to call them myths, or we should call them misconceptions, I guess. Misconceptions is a good word. About Knipex, right? So I've had a lot of guys say, oh, if it's a multi-component handle, it's electrical resistant. Yeah. Like you can cut live wires with it. When they're <laughs> that is definitely not the case. Nope. And Pete is going to explain why. All right. So this is basically the, the couple of different handle types that Knipex offers. You start here at the end. This is our pliers wrench. This is what we call a plastic coated handle to it. It's just basically a dipped plastic material, okay? This one next to it is the Cobra. It's the same plastic dip material, but we call it non-slip. We also call it a texture mm -hmm. because if you get oil or grease on it, there's a little bit of a texture to it to help, right. help you from not slipping off your hands, okay? I think the ones you're talking about, Clay, are these two guys in yeah. here that, that get a little confusing for people because they see a bigger handle compared to these other two, and automatically they think, okay, this is 1,000 volt rated because it looks bigger. It's got different colors to it. So here's the real easy answer. Just because it has a couple different colors to it, just because it has a little bit bigger of a handle to it, doesn't mean that it's rated for 1,000 volts. Hmm. This is what we call our multi-component handle. It's two components. There's a blue and there's a red. Okay, that one's a little bit softer than the other one. It's just for comfort for using it with your hands. Mm -hmm. Notice, Clay, that there's nothing on here that says 1,000 volt rated, mm -hmm. okay? Now, when I jump to this guy in here, you'll notice right away, this tool says 1,000 volt. It's got the double triangle to it. Now, if you are gonna work around live electricity, and obviously, Read all the precautions. You should be trained on if you're going to work on live electricity. Read all the precautions that we give you in our catalog. Live electricity is only for certain situations where you absolutely positively cannot turn off the power, right? right? So we, we strongly suggest you read anything before you start working around live electricity. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we have a, a line of handles that are 1,000 volt rated. The only way we can put a 1,000 volt rated on this is the tools are tested. They're tested in this particular case, in this particular tool, they're tested to ASTM F1505. That's a test standard. The tool has to go through eight different tests just to make sure that it's gonna survive, just to make sure that it's gonna hold up to a thousand volts. Now, we test every single tool that's rated as a thousand volt. We test it in our factory before it leaves. We test it for 10,000 volts, okay? So that's a big difference. You'll also notice too, one of the other things that's different about this tool is there's little, what we call wings on the side of it. Right, the gorge, yeah. Exactly, so what we don't want you to do is, if you're working on electricity, we don't want your thumbs to slip off and accidentally touch a metal surface that's engaged. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to have these little thumb protectors to it. That okay? would be a shocking experience. That would be a shocking be experience. Terrible. We're trying to avoid that. That's right. So hopefully that answers the question, the difference between the handles. We're trying to, Trying to educate everybody to say just because it looks like it's a bigger handle doesn't mean that it's rated for a thousand volt. You have to look for a tool that says thousand volt rated on the handle. So if you bought a pair of red and blue ones, that does not mean that you can go out there and cut live wires. No. So just that's just a safety thing. Like we're not we're not fussing, but yeah. that's kind of like the misconception that's out there. So right. It's kind of like the difference in your screwdrivers. I know you got one of your insulated screwdrivers behind you. Yeah. Like. For you guys that kind of know, that's what it looks like. So that's it's no volt. different than using this screwdriver and electrical panel, which would be safe. And then that's the equivalent of here. And then you're using a regular screwdriver and hoping you don't get shot. <laughs> so like yeah. if you're dumb enough to do it, like that's on you at that point. Yeah. That, that's not what it's designed for. 
So that's the difference between the handles that we offer. So one of the other questions that we've had is talking about the Swedish pipe wrench. Okay. There's no secret. This is my favorite version really? of the Swedish pipe wrench yeah. that you got, okay? So when I was showing these, I also have this same one in my toolbox. Okay. People say, that looks cool, but it looks like it would hurt your hand when you're trying to squeeze yeah. on it. So everybody thinks you have to pinch down on that Swedish pipe no. wrench. So can you give everybody the proper yeah, absolutely. demo? Yeah, absolutely. So, 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 so first off, these are both Swedish pipe wrenches that you were pointing out. Okay, there's a couple little differences between it. We have a couple different jaw styles. Mm -hmm. This is called an S style because if you look at it, it looks like the shape of a letter S. The beauty of that one is it really gives you three points of contact when you're grabbing onto a pipe, which is the more contact you have on, on a surface, the more control over it you have, it, the more you're going to be able to loosen something or tighten something right. up. So there's just different styles ahead. There's one that's got a 90 degree to it. There's one that's got a 45 degree to it. But they all have these teeth that are opposing. So the top teeth go one way, the bottom teeth go the other way. Right. Very similar to our Cobra pliers. The difference between the two of them is this factor in here. So this one is really easy to use. Again, push the button and I adjust it, mm -hmm. okay? This one here, I could still adjust it, but I have to turn the thumb screw here. There's a little ring on the bottom of it that'll prevent you from unthreading it all the way and you can't go any further, right. but it allows me to adjust to that length right in there, okay? Mm -hmm. Both have the I-beam construction, but I think what you were talking about, Clay, is this factor in here, that once I get it onto a pipe, like right here, tighten it up, right about there. Once I get it tight into place, look at that. I don't have to squeeze to hold it together. All I gotta do is put leverage down here and it's gonna hold, Yep. okay? So that's the proper way to use it. So a lot of people think you have to squeeze it the whole time. No. So that's definitely not the case. Yes, you can even look at it. See how much is biting into place? All I gotta do is push down on it. This is a great tool for tie rod adjustments because it's yep. a narrow area. I get inside of there. It's a great tool for that. So that is two misconceptions tossed out the window. So I think y'all was talking about there could be one more or something else with yeah, the a little bit. Yeah, we kind of want to explain a little bit about circular pliers and just because um, we so got a lot of questions let, on this. Let me stop yeah, yeah. you right there. Sure. You guys call it sir clips. <laughs> the rest of the world calls it snap rings. Yeah. So that's what we mean. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> There's so many different names. I've heard so many different right. configurations of this. We call it circle pliers. Okay. Okay. We have two different types that we manufacture. They both do exactly the same thing. They both either install or remove circlips or snap rings. Yep. Okay. This one here is is a forged. It's forged from one solid piece all the way to the tips. This version here we call the precision version. The precision is also forged, but there's a couple of key differences. Okay. The one main key difference is as you look is there's a bolt in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. I don't have a rivet in the middle of it. Well, one of the other myths that we had to, to answer is people say, well, isn't a rivet much better than a bolted joint? Well, actually a bolted joint is more precise, hence the name precision. Mm -hmm. It allows me to adjust it. If, they, if it does get out of line, I can easily adjust it. This is a lot harder to make this because I have to line up the two pieces just exactly. Hence again, the name precision. But here's what's really cool about these and the real big difference between the two of them. If you look at the tips, like I said just a few moments ago, these tips are forged from the so uh, one solid piece all the way to the tip, yeah. okay? These guys, right here, these two little points right in there, they're actually a different material. Mm -hmm. These are actually spring steel. So they have a little bit of, let's call it elasticity. So they got yeah. a little bit of give to them. Because what does everybody want to do when they remove snap, snap rings, is especially the ones that are stuck inside of there? They want to get it in there, get it out as quickly as possible. And some yeah. of these things are stuck in place. And you got you to kind of work at it to get them out of place. This allows us a little bit of flexibility. So it gives a little bit of expansion for the, the snap rings when I'm trying to put them in or take them back out. Okay. These are actually handset in our factory. You can see the little dimple right there. That's the length of the tip. It's, it's inserted by hand and then it's dimpled over to hold it in place. Okay. So, so that's the big difference between the two of them. Sort of crimped in there. Exactly. Cool. So there debunks three different misconceptions about Knipex. So while we're talking about Knipex, how do you say, as the rest of the world wants to say, Nipex? What's the right way to say it? We say it Knipex. 
Put it all together, it's Knipix. That's the way we pronounce it. How do you say it, Maggie? Knipix. What is your Instagram, Maggie? Knipix North America. There you go. <laughs> all right, well, thanks, Pete. Thanks, yeah, Maggie, no for having us. Thanks for putting those myths to bed and fixing some issues. And hopefully, it'll keep somebody from having a shocking experience this weekend. Like always, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. Follow Pete's channel. It's uh, Nipex. Nipex Tools. Nipex Tools, yeah, yeah, on YouTube. He's on every video. He's a movie star. That's the real <laughs> YouTube star. All right, guys, thumbs up. If you liked the video, merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes Do on it. there. If you're not subscribed, it's really hard. You take your finger and click that button. You guys have a great week. See ya.